Hello, Rebecca. Welcome so much to our Leaf Synergy channel. Oh, it's so nice to be here and to be chatting to you again, Alexandra. Yes, it's been three and a half years since we talked since. A lot has happened in those years, hey? <laughs> Yeah, hopefully. And uh, we just uh, super small chatted before we started this, this recording and we realized that uh, we had different and challenging experiences from the year. That's just mm -hmm. past, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think, yeah, it's, um, I'd say that'd be similar for most people. <laughs> Very much so. But where in the world are you sitting right now, Rebecca? <laughs> Right now I'm in Glastonbury, which is in the UK. Um, it's a place where I moved here a couple of years ago. And um, yeah, it was somewhere that I used to lead sacred pilgrimage retreats. It was a place that like I was um, very much called to, like I, it was the place that I'd come when I needed to fill up my well the most. And um, yeah, my husband and I, we, we weren't, we're living in London and we were actually about to move back to Australia, which is where we were both born. Um, but we met in London and yeah, through a few different unexpected twists and turns, we ended up um, moving here instead. <laughs> That's wonderful. I've, I've actually seen a lot of your, you know, courses and your retreats taking place in Glastonbury, but I had no idea that you actually lived there. Yeah, yeah, just a couple of years ago we moved here. Good, good. So just a short introduction of you, Rebecca. You are my uh, favorite author of several books. And this time we are actually, I'm going to show you the Swedish version of Rice, Sister Rice. I really hope that you're going to like it. I don't it. think I've seen it. Oh, wow. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's nice having the crescent moon there. Yes, it, mm. I love this book. And... I think it's uh, and came out really well. And um, this is actually, we already printed it, but it's coming out in January, late January. Amazing. Yes, it's going to be such a nice launch. I really hope that, it's, that people are going to like it because it's uh, beautiful. And I think it's so, it's in the right time. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? It's... Um... I think that what we're, what we're, what this year, and I know it's been different for you in Sweden, but we've all been going through different things, but it's, I think, returning us to the same thing. And I think that we are all returning to the ancient wisdom of the earth, the ancient wisdom of the feminine, um, which of course is what Rise Sister Rise is about. And um, yeah, it definitely is so needed now. And I, I love that it's got a 2021 birth date. <laughs> Why? Well, I think 2021, it's going to be, I think there's going to be shifts coming in and um, yeah, it, it feels right. And it's interesting. I was, I was um, contemplating before just over the weekend, knowing we were going to have our conversation and um you know, I was born in Australia and I think deep down I felt this kind of, um, because ancestrally, of course, um, Australia is not like the continent there is not where my roots are. Um, and when I've done the tracking of my ancestry, it's it's been Europe, obviously, um, Scotland and Ireland um, and a bit of Sweden and a bit of Germany as well and like up Scandinavia. And I find it interesting that I live where I live now because um, I always remember feeling like this kind of like longing for the earth and a place without really knowing where it is and perhaps there is this longing that continues on and on and on i'm not sure maybe everyone have has it or maybe it's just a few of us um but what i do find interesting is that when i was 18 um and i wrote write this in the book um i i got on a plane i saved i worked so many different jobs to save up the money and um, I got on a plane and I came over to Europe 
And what I didn't realize at the time was what I was doing was really like a self-initiatory journey. And I visited lots of different sacred sites, um, particularly in the UK and Ireland. Um, and the one other place that I visited besides the UK was Sweden. <laughs> I went there twice. I had a yeah. friend who was, who was, um, he was was working in Sweden and so I went to Sweden twice in this trip which was like about four months long and so and it was it was around this time of year actually um, we flew back on Christmas Eve which I believe I know the way you celebrate Christmas is different to how I grew up and so we experienced that and I'd never been in the Northern Hemisphere um, at this time of year or any time, but particularly this time of year. Um, I was grew up in Australia, which is not very seasonal. Um, and then, of course, this time of year that we're speaking in, which is December, I'm not sure when you're watching it, whoever's watching it, um, it's bright summer. And I remember being like feeling how north I was um, in the world and being like, oh, my gosh, it's so dark and magical and yeah so i um i have I've, I've definitely been called to sweden um in these ways that that i hadn't planned um uh, so yeah so um i want to hear what has happened in your life since we talked since i mean i know that big things have happened in <laughs> half years so I, tell us a little bit a little wrap up well, i got married um and so i met my husband i think i wrote about meeting him in my first book um and but then i, I actually i got the book contract for rise sister rise and i was actually writing it the the months before the wedding and then after it so it was kind of like cradled <laughs> either side um and then yeah just a year and a month ago i had a baby a little boy his name's sunny um so that was here in glastonbury um i've definitely been i've, I've worked on some oracle decks two different oracle decks which are I love beautiful to thank you. you can see some of them behind you oh yeah yeah that's some of the artwork and i'm working on um a new one there these are my walls they're just like filled with all different things <laughs> um, post-its i love post -its. Oh, yeah my process oh post-its yes exactly it's the only way to to kind of like anchor in my crazy feminine mind i like i've got friends who write books and do their processes like very in like a list. So I, my friend Kyle Gray, who is a, he's with my pub, one of my publishers, um, he I've sat on an airplane with him while he's been writing, and it's so linear. He literally is like next chapter, okay, tick, right, 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 right. <laughs> Whereas I'm like in this like whole process. So you you got married, you moved to Glastonbury, mm -hmm. you um, had a baby. You entered motherhood, which mm. is a big shift in life. Mm. How does that feel? You're an entrepreneur as well, so it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Well, luckily, my husband got a very clear sign to join my company. So that kind of made it a little bit easier um, than I think it would have been because he was going to a separate separate job. So I think that, that has helped. Um, and has allowed me to, because um, obviously being a mom, you just have less time. And um, I think I definitely have mum brain. That's what I'm calling it. Maybe it's just because I'm still breastfeeding a little bit. But my brain is not as, as it was not very linear to start with. And now it's really not. <laughs> and so having him and then I've got a couple of other people who are like, um, you know, just like working part time help me um, to be able to stay in the creative space more because I think it'd be so challenging um, just doing all the normal business stuff on top of that. Um, you know, I was someone who I did think I'd be a mum, but I wasn't someone who was like, I definitely knew it my whole life. I was kind of, I, I didn't know until I knew um, that it was time. And I think if I look back, I think I was scared to 
miss my soul's mission um and because I think I from being really really young I kind of just like knew that I wanted to write and create and so that was like such a big thing within me that I think I was a bit afraid of like oh gosh what if I what if I miss that um and so obviously I'm, I'm 39 now so it was like nearer the end of mother years rather than the beginning um and what I experienced is, um, oh my gosh, like it's only deepened the creativity for sure. Um, I definitely don't have as much time um, as I would normally, and I'm tired a lot. I've got really good, a really good light behind here. I'm really, my bags are really low <laughs> normally. Um, but I have noticed that. Um, my writing's getting more potent. Um, so I think something definitely happened through the birth of, um, you know, I'd had a lot of what I'd call transcendent experiences through my work. Um, and, and then obviously imminent ones, which is like being a normal human, but I hadn't had many that were like fit, like really combined like heaven and earth at the same time and the birth was that it was like um it was painful but on top of that <laughs> i remember this feeling of like almost like reaching to the stars while also being like more pulled into my body than i'd ever been before and the pregnancy was that for me too like i had i had a lot of initiations in the pregnancy for sure um, it was not smooth sailing, um, but it was an invitation constantly to come back into my body. Um, and so it was definitely, it's definitely helped me be more grounded, but in being more grounded, it's like I can reach higher as well. So yeah, I, and I'm still, but then there's many things that I could do, like, um, uh, I was a lot more linear then than I am now. Like now I understand like with my mum when sometimes she'd forget things or she'd be like, call me my uncle's name or whatever. It's like you're holding a lot more as a mum. <laughs> that is so true. And I guess you you just have to learn to to accept that and be wherever you need to be. Mm, totally. So professionally, a lot of things have happened to you too. I mean, I know that you've done your Oracle cards and, and so on, but you have also, since I first learned about you, you have also developed a lot of um, courses, retreats, and you built this group of sisterhood. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, the, the Rise Sister Rise membership, it's, um, it's like a monthly membership or a yearly membership. And essentially it's, um, I was talking about it the other day, actually, is like a gift for your soul <laughs> is the way we see it. It's like, um, like my, I'm getting clearer and clearer on my, my work's mission. And it definitely is around weaving the soul back into our everyday life. Um, and yeah. And so really the Ride Sister Rise membership is a community, but it's also like a, um, is it an online space where like anything that you want to do to connect with your soul is there. So whether it's meditations or rituals or chants or um, just this month where, um, where each member will get like a physical um, altar card print. This isn't it. We're waiting it from the, the printers, but it's a different image. Um, but yeah, so I'm really, it's, it's really for, for people who are, are called to kind of, um, step into that devotional space, listen to the whispers of a soul and like, and let that wise part of us, um, that is, is, is really inviting us to listen to it over and over again. And, and this wise part of us, our soul, I believe is connected to the intelligence in all of nature, in all of life. And that when we surrender to that part of us and, and listen to it and spend a little bit of time with it each day or each week or each month, then 
through saying yes to that and letting that part of of you lead you or aligning your life to that all of a sudden it's like things do feel like they're more aligned they feel like like we're being led by this it's like this golden thread of life and it doesn't mean that that oh things are only good but what it means is that that our life is fully in alignment with like who we are deep down rather than like who the world's taught us to be we're in charge kind of thing right so we can we can see the obstacles coming for us and we can handle them differently hopefully i mean i've told you before your books move me mm. i i find so much happiness um reading them because not only because of the wording the the wording and the the text is is fantastic it's very easy to identify with it because you write very personally about your life and about your experiences but um, a big part of it is guidance but the layout of the book is what really um <laughs> how do you say it really fits me because mm -hmm. it's super short chapters it's very you know visually you you find little quirks and twinkles and stuff that actually makes me me happy it makes me smile and you know it you when i talk about your books it's always and when i you know sell them to people my friends and stuff i always say you know you get so much in so few pages so you mm -hmm. can just read one page two pages <laughs> okay, and you have you know food for thought for days ahead oh so thank you well <laughs> i think it's probably because um prior to the work i do now um i i worked for a while as a copywriter um and the mentors i had there were well I was going to say very hard on me, <laughs> but in a good way, if that makes sense. Um, and I had to like write a hundred headlines to get like one approved. And so, and I think also I'm um, personally, like I've, I had reading difficulties growing up and I'm such a slow, slow reader that um, I don't like long chapters myself. So I think both of those things have helped me kind of like refine it down. I'm also a Virgo, so it's like perfectionist in a way <laughs> and Scorpio rising. So it's like um, gathering all the information and then like crafting it and crafting it and crafting it till it's like, ah, oh, that's it. <laughs> but I, I can tell, I can tell truly. And both your books are the same. Now, Light is the New Black, we published that, like I said, three and a half years ago. And we are relaunching it now with a different name because I don't think we, we translated the, the mm. title directly. And I don't think it really hit the Swedish market. Got so it. we're calling it something different now, but it's actually the same book. And oh, really brilliant. Yes. It's going to be nice with a soft cover this time. So it's mm. easy to, to fold and stuff. So, um, so how, how is Rise Sister Rise? You know, in Swedish, we call it fe Feminine Kraft, which is Feminine Power. Mm -hmm. That's the title of the Swedish book. So what do you, how would you describe this uh, compared to Light is the New Black? So Light is the New Black is really around... Um, people who like know that they're here for a reason and are just like oh, I, d I don't know what it is or or I kind of do but and so it's kind of like it helps you get crystal clear on what you're here for and and then turn it into action so all of my books there's so what I call soul inquiry in a in in light is a new black it's called work your light um, and then um, rise, sister, rise, it's rise, sister, rise. So it's like a call to action. I'm, I'm such a believer in, you know, intuition is pointless unless we act on it. Um, and so that slide is a new black. Rise, sister, rise is, um, 
It's to help us tap into our wisdom and unleash our power. So it is um, like the next step on. I mean, you could read them in in, in any order, but it, it's very focused on reconnecting to, particularly as women, our our cyclic nature. Um, so and and how we're connected to everything in the entire universe through surrendering to that. Now that doesn't mean that it's you you need to have a monthly cycle to surrender to your cyclic nature. Like we have seasons all through our life, inner and outer. Um it's through it's like um connecting with the outer seasons around us. So right now you and I we're going into winter into what's known as the fertile void of winter and it feels like nothing will grow again and like it's getting dark and just like oh my god (laughs) but then if you real if you listen and if you listen into the the wisdom of the seasons which exist within us too you realize that oh my gosh beneath the surface of the earth nothing's ever been more fertile in that darkness right and i think that's the case for us as well like when we're, I mean, this year, 2020, I know Sweden's had a bit of a different, a very different experience than the UK. Um, but regardless of where we are, we are as a planet going through something. And it is like a, a planetary winter. And, and we don't know where it's going yet. The jury's out, who knows? Um, but something is happening beneath the surface as we've been drawing in and drawing in, but in, in many places of the world. So really rise sister rise is an invitation to, to remember, um, and embrace the, the intelligent feminine within us, the powerful feminine within us. Um, just as we, as a, a, a planet have, um, generally speaking, um, kind of cut off a little bit from the goddess, cut off a bit from the earth as the mother and all those feminine mysteries. In Europe, there was the witch hunts, um, and that's just one of many, many ways that the feminine hasn't been revered and respected um, through the ages, and that is what's rising back. And, of course, it's not just about women or, or people who identify as being a woman it's the feminine that that is within us all which is which is ancient and wise and powerful and seated through all of nature how would you um describe the your view of the feminine and the masculine forces powers energies mm-hmm. So we obviously have both within us, regardless of whether we're a woman or a man. Um, But the feminine is the intuition. It's it's creativity. It's um, ferocious power. Um, It is not linear. (laughs) It's kind of it's it's like a spiral. Um, whereas the masculine is linear, it is um, it, it pushes ahead, um, it is clear, it makes sense, and we have both of them within us. And you know, like I say, intuition isn't is pointless without action. Intuition is feminine, action is masculine. So if we're just in the masculine, then we're just being like, this has to happen no matter what, you know? Um, and if we're just in the feminine, we're just kind of like, you know, in the dream. Like if I was in the feminine the whole time writing a book, I would never get a book written. Mm-hmm. We need the balance of the two. Mm-hmm. Mm. So what is the, what, what was your reason for writing Rice Sister Rice? With this um, feminine power in, in mm-hmm. your you know, mindset? You know, it's interesting because I, I actually wrote it um, and, and heard the whisper for it when I was here in Glastonbury in, I wasn't living here at the time, um, but it was a place called the Chalice Well. It's um, it's an ancient well, of like a red red spring well, um, which has the Vesica Pisces on it, which is the, the masculine and feminine together. Um, and it's the Peace Gardens there. And that's where I, I first heard 
about Rise Sister Rise because um, I, 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 when I write, I think I, I am a channel. I, I don't just channel, so I don't stand up on stage and chat, but my writing process is that. Um, and most often through my writing process, I'm receiving what I need to hear in that moment. Um, and then I'm just sharing that. That's my secret process. Um, and so for me, I, I needed to, to swim in the waters of the mother. Um, I definitely was yearning, yearning, yearning for the space to be, to, to dive into the feminine, um, I had spent a lot of my career and life, like I was raised with my mum and dad, but the roles were kind of reversed with them. My mum was the the career woman and I'd always been like such a hard worker and, and, you know, very career focused as well. And um, at the time, my mum actually had breast cancer and it was around the same time that this book came in. And so it was like there was this feminine line healing stuff that we were going through ourselves. Um, My first book had just been um, released and because I think my entire life, I, I felt the call to share my soul's voice but it took a long time to work out how the heck to do that. By the time the book was released, I just really felt like um, I needed to do everything that I could to, to kind of like honor the opportunity. And I was just really burnt out to be honest. Um, And yeah. And I, I, I'd begun um, living in alignment with the feminine but then that really made me realize how much of my life was kind of built in these pillars of the masculine so it was kind of like a an undoing and an unwinding as i was writing it um and so many of my my friends um were going through that same thing as well of like yes i want to i i want to be reverent to the feminine wisdom i i want to unleash the power i want to live in in accordance to the cycles and the seasons and i don't really know how so that's really what that book was and is about now this was first published in 2016 so to me, you're ahead of the game a little bit before the Me Too thing, before Glennon Doyle's Untamed, which mm-hmm. has gotten a lot of publicity. So how do you respond to that? How do you feel when I say that? Mm. Well, <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I think it just is, is, it just says to me that I was definitely living it as I was writing it, <laughs> which I was. Um, and then I'm thinking I'm writing this other book at the moment, which has a similar, um, the creative process has been the same as Rise, Sister, Rise. It was like I was energetically moving through a lot of stuff while I was writing it versus complete completing the living it and then looking back and writing it. <laughs> I think the latter is easier, but maybe that's not my process. <laughs> then again, Rebecca, the, the book is so authentic. Both mm. your books are really authentic. So I don't think that you manage doing that without living it. Right. <laughs> that is true. I think I just mean more like, you know, you finish living it and then you wait five years and then you write about what happened then. <laughs> rather than ah! <laughs> because, but I think part of it was like with the energy of of that book like a, the energy that I, I um, talk about with that book is the Magdalene's energy um, and so it was like it was a there was a communication happening versus tell us about the Magdalene's we're not very familiar with us so you, you would have heard of Mary Magdalene right yeah so to me the magdalens um are the it's the feminine that has been silenced and dismissed and pushed aside throughout 
thousands of years of history. Um, it's the one who has the wisdom within it and, and, and is whispering and whispering and whispering. So that is what the Magdalens are for me. It is linked to Mary Magdalene, but it's not Mary Magdalene only. It's like, I think there's many, many, many of us, many of us who have, have, um, returned to to really be part of the rising and return of the feminine um and to me when i'm writing um i'm writing about the return of the feminine soul that's what i'm writing about um obviously there's many many books on on various different parts of of the rising of the feminine and women and all of that but yeah that's that's the area that this book is particularly about i love it what is your trick to stand in your power in your feminine power mm, i would say that um the way that i do that is through being courageous and i think that word can be misunderstood so my understanding of courageous is is speaking even if you're afraid um as in speaking your truth so courage um the english version of the word i'm i'm told is comes from the french which means cur, which is like, it's, it's being like lion hearted. Um, and what I've discovered about courage is that it's not possible without fear. And so I think that, that our power comes from our alignment to self. Um, if we're trying to please other people or if we're trying to kind of fit into like a certain mold or box um and and also be in our power it's it's a lot harder whereas if we're if we find the courage to 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 voice our truth and now our truth might be completely different to the person next to us um but if we stay true to our truth um then i think that's the quickest road to inner power. Do you think, um, when, it strikes me when we talk about this, that many people, including myself many years ago, uh, I don't know what woke the whispers or what you know made them louder, but it's like they, they, have, they have probably always been there, but I have never heard them. Don't you think a lot of people don't listen to the whispers? Yeah, totally. Um, it's, you know, I think hearing people talk about the whispers can make it sound like it's a shout. Um, I think understanding the different ways that we receive the intelligence of our inner being, of our soul helps. So some of us and the first thing to realize is that we are all intuitive if you're human you're intuitive because we have senses and it's through our senses that our soul speaks to us so they are there's clairvoyance which is clear seeing clear audience which is clear hearing so that's whispers <laughs> um clear sentience which is clear feeling so that's like you know you're like oh something doesn't feel right in my belly or you walk into a room and you're like has there just been an argument or something you can pick it up um so there's many different types of um clear cognizance is another one which is clear thinking now that's a tricky one because sometimes it can feel like you're in your head <laughs> but if you're in the shower and an idea pops in fully formed that's your clear cognizance um and so as far as um hearing the whispers your whispers might be feelings like niggling feelings or or knowings you know my husband's very clear cognizant he just like knows he's very clear <laughs> um so i think the thing that what i feel very passionate about is is in order for us to 
to hear the whispers, we need to carve a little bit of time out to hear it. So spend a little bit more time with our soul, just like we would if we wanted to deepen a relationship with someone, we'd be like, okay, great. Well, let's catch up once a week or, or I want to, I want to, um, I don't know, get stronger. I want to be able to do, this is not me. This is my husband. Chin ups. <laughs> this is not me. Um, you know, you got to show up to do your chin ups every, like maybe it's like 10, 10 a week or 10 a day. I, I don't know. Um, and so it's that rhythm that's necessary in order to kind of turn the volume up a little bit and then just like any relationship the more time you spend with it so the more time you spend with the inner life the the soul the the better that relationship gets the easier it is to recognize it when you're feeling it yeah you put it in very nice words so it's easy to understand thank you (laughs) But and I think it's so important that everyone listens a little bit, whatever sense you need to activate to listen to it. Mm. So, uh, Rebecca, in the book, you introduce us to terms and concepts uh, with different spiritual connections. What, what spiritual paths do you feel connected to, extra connected to? Mm. Um, my greatest teacher is definitely nature itself. Um, in 2012, when I was really going through a difficult time, it was during that time that it was like I was reconnected to the intelligence of nature. I had several experiences, um, not that you need an experience to connect with nature, but I realized that all of the ancient wisdom that we seek is actually coded into nature. And so that is my number one, number one teacher for sure. Um, I now, um, every day, my, my number one way to connect with my soul now is to, to walk in nature, um, and meditate in nature. Absolutely. Um, I've studied various different traditions, um, and, um, with various different teachers as well. Um, there is not one lineage that is like, that is because I think that all of the answers are within, if you, if you go back enough, mother earth holds it all, you know? So I'm, I'm, I, I'm a, I have um, deep respect for all the different paths and and traditions um, that humans have devoted themselves to, and I think that that there is something even greater seated within all of that. It's funny because uh, when reading your books, I, I find that you are. I um, you talk about or I talk about generalists and specialists. And you're a generalist among different uh, mm. spiritual paths. That's what I have kind of understood. But it's nice. It's part of. It's kind of what you're saying. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Because like I feel like every time I'm draw. So like I'm trained in in bhakti yoga um, as a kirtan leader. Like like that is, and I'm also trained as a shaman. And so I, I've done. Um, considerable training and things but like it's never just one thing to me like I feel like um, I think because for me everything is coming back to the soul and it's coming back to the soul of the universal soul as well and so yeah um, I often think I'm like oh gosh be really good if there was just one path <laughs> but it doesn't that seem to be my path and that w- wouldn't make you any special not that special <laughs> you're special because you you find your your things in that mm. works the best for you mm-hmm. let's talk a little bit about your creative side mm-hmm. so i know that you have you have a history within a commercial mm-hmm. right and um when looking at your, you know, when we were talking about how should we, how should we do the cover of the book, I said to the uh, art director, 
you have to go to Rebecca's website because she has so much inspiration just you know in everything you do and I think that you are a true creator so tell us a little bit how what does art have in what what place does art have in your life well I think that to me beauty is a gateway to the soul um and I think that through creating art and and just anything that has resonance with you um what we're doing is we're stepping from um so in the ancient greeks spoke of chronos time and kairos time chronos time is is linear time again it's like masculine time um it's important like we needed that time to show up here <laughs> um to actually be in the world together i think that when we see something beautiful it invites us into kairos time which is soul time it's 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 called like right time it's when when things are yeah oh sorry it just it just stopped <laughs> oh! <laughs> it was, i was in kairos time <laughs> It was a notification about about our meeting. I'm like, what? <laughs> so that was the divine humor of Kronos time. <laughs> But yeah, Kairos time is, um, you know, when things just come together or it feels like time stretches a little bit. Um, that's the space of the soul. You know, when you, you um, catch up with someone um, who, you know, you might, the term soul family where all of a sudden it's like time stretches and you just don't even look at your phone. You're just fully there together. That's Kairos time. And I think that, that beauty, art, um, music, poetry, what they do is they give us an experience of the soul in matter. So it's like the soul fully comes in it's like the two together transcendent and imminent at the same time so and you know you like you would know this experience of like when you had a baby of just like looking at the baby like wow it baby just draws us in because they're they've they're they've got the they're more in the soul time than we are Just like any period of your life when you've been initiated into something whether it's through like becoming a mother or or or, or losing a mother or whatever it is um, we all go through these initiations where it's clear we're not who we were but we're not we've not yet become who we're becoming so you're in this transition period which is the winter the void and it feels like everything's falling apart but actually that's the transformation like that's where the alchemy is so if we like allow ourselves to be led through that right so anyway I was in one of those bits I still kind of am <laughs> I think those periods last for years sometimes um and we always look back at them and be like wow that was an incredible experience now It may have been excruciating at the time or uncomfortable or whatever, but that's where the transformation happened because I, I, I hurdled myself into it, you know? Anyway, so it was a couple of months, I think, after I had my son or three months maybe, and I was beginning to receive um, um, chapters of this new book that I'm writing now and I felt so torn between, and it came since I gave birth to him. So I'm like, whoa, no, he he's brought this in as well. So I felt torn between, do I honor the writing or do I just spend time with him and back and forth, back and forth. And then um, a really wise woman said to me during this, whatever age it is, I think it was his first six months or something, they were like, The most important thing he needs is loving eyes, mirroring, and for you to see who had come. Just see him, receive him. You don't have to do that all day long, but when you're with him, do that. So then all of a sudden I'd, I'd, I'd spend some time 
walking and and I I write when I walk and then I come back and I'd hold him in my arms and I was able to through realizing that fully receive him and it was a different frame of mind of like fully receiving the soul that had come Mm. I think we all yearn for that Mm. and I'm constantly reminding myself to do that um with people in my life, gosh, with myself, <laughs> need to do that a little bit more. But I think that there's there's such an invitation there for us to do that. And I think that's what being around young babies does because it's it's almost impossible not to see that. Mm. That's very true. That's a nice way of starting motherhood. And um, looking back at my own small children when they were babies unfortunately I was too occupied with other things to be you know that center so I think maybe I have a little bit of bad conscience around that but Mm -hmm. when you put those words out there it feels I can still relate to being Mm -hmm. there and seeing them for exactly you know but we do this we do it naturally That's the thing. And I think, I think the thing I was like judging myself, but if I wasn't judging myself, I'd be doing that naturally. Exactly. So like I see people do it with my son all the time and they, they're not necessarily like conscious and awake. It happens naturally. Yeah. And I think the other thing that I really believe is that our, our babies choose us <laughs> and, um, I know like obviously I'm a daughter of a mother and father and like no one's childhood is is it, it's it's all as it as it should be. And it's like we we each come in with this like really detailed karmic plan and it's all perfect. Totally understand. Totally relate. Totally mm. agree. <laughs> Mm. And I also don't want it to sound like I, what I, I I wasn't trying to say then that I'm I'm this mum who's like so like this. <laughs> I'm really not like I'm not a patient person at all. I'm like my son isn't either. He's a million miles an hour. Like he he's definitely he's got his mission. And so me saying that is like this constant invitation for myself to do that because it's like we can't be in our soul all day long it's impossible we're not meant to be we're not meant to be but that's relieving to hear and that uh, what i hear it's not you being the perfect person i hear not you saying people. don't judge <laughs> yes that's exactly it yeah and because i think i don't know any mums who d- don't judge um we should stop judging. We're we're probably really good parents. We're exactly what we're meant to be. And yeah. and like but this is also like part of um what what is in Rise Sister Rise, particularly the redefining sisterhood bit. Because like when I was like feeling um when I was judging myself, it was because I was I have I've got a great supportive um WhatsApp community. I did one of those mums groups. Um, and everyone's amazing in it. Um, but what, what I've found is like, I haven't, I haven't found my community yet of mums who are like me. So I've got lots of people that I like in my life. I mean, there's plenty out there, I'm sure, but you know, everyone in the, in one of my mum's groups were, um, completely stay at home mom. Um, and so they were either on maternity leave for a year or what and like I run my own business and so that wasn't possible um and yeah and so I felt torn and I'm like oh they're making cookies every day and like doing all these things and I know that's not who I am so do I because everyone else is doing it and this is the the judgment that the comparison that's what it is the comparison because everyone else is doing it oh I'm a bad version of whatever this archetype is that doesn't even exist but i see it and we see it in this in this in this group of us it's like 
one person will do something like one person did and um you know you have advent calendars there yeah so one of them did um it was incredible like this gingerbread advent calendar right so it was like different gingerbread cookie for every single day it was incredible and all of the mums are like oh i haven't done like we all did it and i did it too and then my husband's like you just wrote a book and dedicated it to your son it's you don't need to do that and just like that woman doesn't need to write a book like do you know and i think this is so what is broken in the feminine in all of us like we can compare so much you know and we we feel like um uh like we can't quite trust each other enough you know not everyone but i think it does exist within so many of us um and i think that we really are redefining what the feminine and what mother, what daughter, what sister actually means. And we need maps for ourselves. And and every single person is going to have a different map. So <clears throat> you have your Swedish audience in front of you right now. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give them? Do you have, I, I used to ask uh, the authors, Do you have a couple of truths that you want to share with your audience mm-hmm. in Sweden? Mm. Well, I'd say the first one would be that that all the answers that we seek can be found in nature. Um, and so that can just be like going for a, a walk each day and noticing the seasons changing and just letting nature speak to us. Um, and it, doesn't have to be out loud it can just be through noticing the leaves that have fallen and then asking yourself what's what's falling away in my life right now or the buds that are blooming allowing that to speak to you as well because we we're not separate from nature and we don't just live in nature we are nature so the more we can connect to nature and look at the flowers and and the waves of the water rippling um then the easier it is to connect to ourselves as well um the second one would be if you want to hear or see or receive information from your soul spend a little bit more time with it so Um, if you're busy, it doesn't have to be hours on end. It can literally be five or 10 minutes a day. Um, and then I'd say the third one would be kind of off that point. If you, if you do feel disconnected, one of the best things I ever did, um, was commit to a regular spiritual practice most teachers will share this with you and it seems like so like common but it's it's one of the most powerful things you can do and again don't overwhelm yourself with hours on end just 10 minutes a day you can just literally pick a um a music track that that lights you up that that makes you feel aligned and centered and imagine like receiving from source above and then being held by the earth as well like if you want inspiration receive from the source if you want to feel healed and held allow yourself to be held by the earth um but yeah and i call it non-negotiable spiritual practice is something which will create the most shifts in your life for sure Do you have a spiritual practice that you do every day? Yeah, um, it it has. So there was a period of of um, about three or so years where it was the same one every day, um, and that is um, it's called pillar of light meditation or light bathing meditation. They're they're similar. Um, so they're, they're on my website if you want that one of them it's very very simple meditation which is um connecting to source energy when i moved to glastonbury and i was pregnant and but even 
just before I got pregnant as well, I began doing a practice and I thought I was, I was like, oh my gosh, why can't I show up to my meditation anymore? And all my body wanted to do was lay on the earth. Um, and I was thinking, this is very lazy. <laughs> but eventually, then I realized what was happening. Um, and I laid on the on the earth with the back of my heart on the earth. And I began like feeling like a pulse, like just not like in my mind, like sometimes you can actually feel it like with your body pressed against the earth. And I slowed down my breath and I imagined it's, it's, it's a practice now that I call, um, earth pulsing. Um, and yeah, you're, you're allowing the weight of your body to, to fall into the earth and almost like the, the, the great mother, like cradling you, um, and imagine your heart beginning to beat in unison with her as in the pulse of the planet. So it's like, um, that's it's saying, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So that's that's one that I I, I do do regularly. Um, but when I'm riding, which I am now, um, I I walk in nature. I call it intuitive nature walking. So I just kind of walk, um, and then I will do a form of um, mostly I'll do like probably the light bathing meditation while I'm um, in between riding. So it's more of an extended one, but otherwise it's it's like five to 10 minutes. I, d I don't do it for, for, for ages. I use your light source meditation. Oh, amazing. Ever since I met it three and a half years ago. Not every day, but I really like it. It's so easy and it gives so much energy. Yeah, oh, that's so good. I think it just like puts you into that receptive mode. It's the feminine again. So it's like you can be filled up. So we are closing up here. But before we uh, end our conversation, I'd like to ask you, are you going to reveal what the book you're writing is about? <laughs> yes, I can. Um, so I've written one um, already that is not out yet, and it's called Letters to a Starseed. So I'm in the copy edit for that. Um, and that is all about planting ourselves here. So it's about committing to like physically being here on earth. It's for anyone who feels, um, connected to, um, the concept of, it's really about souls on earth. Um, but the term star seed is, is recognizing that there is a part of us that exists beyond just this life. Um, that has experienced um, perhaps many lifetimes, perhaps, you know, what happens in between our lives as well. So that's that one. That's our, I that think. Already. You yeah. have a card deck that is called Star Seed. I have a card deck called Star Seed, yeah. And then the, the one that I'm writing that is the wild one right now is the title for that is um, Returning, Weaving the Soul Back into Everyday Life. Um, oh. and it, and it is really about, um, it's about the fact that like trusting the inner and outer seasons of our life. And it's about recognizing that life's always trying to initiate us into even more of who we are. And it's also about the fact that no matter what happens, we're always going somewhere sacred. Mm -hmm. So even if it's like the dark night of the soul or, or, you know, we're in, in an in-between stage of we're not who we once were, but we're not quite who we are becoming to like trust, trust that we can be led through it. Beautiful. We have so much to look forward to. <laughs> I'm going to love it. So is it still Hay House? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then I will be prompted with your manuscripts once they're out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you will. Oh, bless. Look forward to it. Oh, so. Thank you so much for supporting my books. Thank you. You have given me a lot of, a lot of wisdom that I bear with me every single day. Oh, bless. Yes. Thank you, Rebecca. My pleasure. I want to wish you a fantastic December 
and a great Christmas time. And I hope that you will be able to meet your family in Australia. Yeah, me soon. too. It'll happen probably Yes. next year. <laughs> Oh, So have a great day. thank Thank you you so for having much. me. Thank you. It's so lovely to connect with you again, Alexandra. Yes, wonderful. Talk again. Bye. See ya.